Good morning, everybody. So I will present you the results of the William Technical Committee um, testing and characterization of earth-based building materials and elements. So this TC is composed by more than 30 members uh, from eight countries uh, all over the world. But before uh, beginning the core of my presentation, uh, I will present you a brief overview of urban construction. First, the basic principle is to take some earth, if possible, near the construction site, to condition it, if necessary, and to build some wall with several techniques. But whatever the techniques, what is important is that the embodied energy remain quite low and that the earth of the wall can be reused. So it's a very circular approach. So we, show, we saw that there is several construction techniques. I have not clearly the time here to present all of them. But I can present uh, the main families, uh, which can be um, identified in function of the water content of manufacture. If the water content of manufacture is near the optimum water content, uh, we can compact the earth in order to make monolithic wall, surround earth, or masonry unit, its compressor block. If the water content of manufacture is between the plastic and the liquid limit of the earth, we can make masonry unit like adobe, monolithic wall, scrub, uh, infilling material, water and dove, uh, plasters, and more stuff. And if the uh, water content of manufacture is higher than the liquid limit, we can make some insulation material, which is lighter. Another important point is that oven construction are well distributed all over the world. And that um, a lot of World Heritage sites are made in Earth. This is some example of them among others. But Earth is not only a material of the past. There is more and more very interesting uh, new uh, urban construction that are made all over the world. And there is two examples of them here. However, when we think about urban construction, we don't always think about this picture. We saw about this one. So a picture of disaster, of collapse. And the um, iconic example of that is in 2003, when the, there is the earthquake in Iran, and uh, the collapse of the citadel of Bam, and that BBC say no more mud. So uh, when we look at this picture, we can wonder if it is possible to build durable construction with earth. Hey, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, but Earth should be properly uh, used, should be properly implemented. And the main problem for that is that it lacks suitable regulation for urban materials, but take into account the specificity of Earth. And it is one of the main goals of this TC, is to participate to fill in this gap. For that purpose, the main question that we want to answer in the TC is how urban materials can be included in a common standardization approach. But to answer this question, we need to answer some sub-questions first. That are how to define a good soil for construction, what are the specific behavior of a material, and how to assess its performance, how to assess the durability of a material, and the last one, which is quite important as well, is how to define the ecological added value of a construction, which is quite important for the promotion of this matter. And in order, to, in order to answer all these questions, uh, eight, eight, eight working groups have been uh, uh, created within UTC. And um, so my presentation will follow this uh, working group with the first point that will be the presentation of the state of art activity, state of the art activity that will that have been realized within the working groups, and the second one will be the presentation of a rule within test. Uh, that have been done in order to solve the main issue that have been identified during the first part of the thesis or during the state of the art activity. And I will finish my presentation with conclusion and perspectives. So at first, we will answer the question of what is a good earth for construction. So at first, uh, we should not use topsoil in case of due to organic matter, and we should not use hard work as well. Earth should be a mixture of clay, because clay is the binder, silt, sand, and possibly gravel. Thus, this definition is too large, it is not sufficient. So, to have a much more precise definition, we can look 
at the way uh, that the mason uh, can characterize the proper of for construction. And actually, mason use performantial field tests. So if these field tests are very interesting and uh, very useful, but they remain qualitative and uh, should be performed by uh, experienced and uh, um, professional. So it is not sufficient for research activity because for research activity we need a really deeper knowledge of the characteristics of a raw material. So another way to define uh, a proper of to make construction is to look at scientific paper with a researcher. Uh, and so we have uh, looked at more than 70 scientific papers and we have analy analyzed the earth that have been used in this paper uh, through four uh, main uh, points. The particle size distribution, the physical and geotechnical characterization, which are basically the atabag limit and the metinal blue value, the chemical and mineralogical characterization. And what we found is that if uh, the particle size distribution of the earth that have been used are really well uh, given in papers. It is not the case for chemical and mineralogical characterization. And it's a main problem because we know that the knowledge of the sole particle size distribution is not sufficient because we need the nature of, and the activity of the clays, uh, which are the active phase of the material. So sure, we can have a first idea of this nature through the atabag limit and metinal blue value, but it is not sufficient. If we want to have, if we want to have a real deep uh, understanding of what occurs within the material, we need really to have a better chemical and mineralogical characterization. And so this is one first result of this TC, is to say to the scientific community that work on Earth that we need to have a better characterization of the raw material before doing any studies on this material. Okay, so the second point that we want to, to discuss is the specific behavior of urban material. So, and not to well assess this specific behavior, we need to know that earth is a porous material with a very high permeability. This is due to the network of macropores within the material. And the other point is that due to presence of clays, the mechanical behavior of the material is truly dependent of its water content, and that the material have a very high specific surface area. Due to all that point, there will be strong couplings within the materials that need to be assessed. Coupling uh, between the liquid uh, mass transfer, between the vapor mass transfer, between the heat transfer, and between the mechanical behavior. So we'll first study the coupling between heat and mass transfer. That can be summarized by this diagram here, where we can see here the hygroscopic coupling, so between liquid water and uh, water vapor, through suction desorption phenomena. So the suction is when the uh, vapor of the air uh, is adsorbed within the pore walls, and the desorption is when the uh, liquid in the pore walls uh, go back to, to, uh, to the air. And um, the second couplings between mass and heat is due to the enthalpy of phase change of this adsorption desorption phenomena is due to the variation of the thermal property with water content, but is as well uh, due to the variation of uh, uh, hydric parameters with temperature, so which are the transport parameter and which has the vapor pressure at saturation. So, but this diagram is purely theoretical, and uh, it's important to, to know if uh, this hydrothermal coupling have an impact, a real impact on the, on the material behavior. Actually, this coupling has been observed in laboratory, so an impact has been really observed in laboratory, and when an uninstrumented uh, urban houses, we have seen some kind of uh, important difference between the, expectation, the expected thermal behavior and the real actual behavior. However, right now, it is not yet proven that this difference is only due to agrothermal process. So research must be, uh, must be continued on that point in order to reach definitive conclusion. Anyway, if we want to model the agrothermal behavior of urban construction, we need to know the key parameter that drives this behavior, which are the thermal parameter, so uh, thermal conductivity and heat capacity, uh, which are the uh, 
uh, effective vapor diffusion through the material, or mu, mu, which is the ratio between the free diffusion coefficient and uh, the diffusion coefficient within the material, which are the sorption, uh, desorption curve or their slope. So I recall that the sorption curve is the increase of water content within the material when the relative humidity of the air increases, um, and uh, which are the permeabilities, so the relative permeability of liquid and air. So when we look at these values, uh, the first thing we can say is that the range of uh, value for each parameter, this parameter is very important. Uh, even if we do not consider light earth, so the insulation material, so only for dense, quite dense urban material, we can have a quite important range of values. The second thing that we can um, uh, underline is that there is no clear protocol for some of parameters, like uh, the effective variability coefficient when the water content becomes too low. And the last one is for the mu value, and uh, because this parameter, which is quite important, even if it exists quite a uh, classical test uh, to measure it, we can see that when we make some uh, round robin tests between laboratories, there is really some problem with the uh, wet cup and dry cup measurement with a strong lack of reproductibility. And um, that's why uh, one of the actions of the one of the tests that have been made in BTC was to study this parameter in particular. Now, if we look at the mechanical behavior, we can say that whatever the urban construction techniques, it seems to have quite a quite tendency of an increase of the compressive strength with dry density, of a decrease of the compressive strength with water content, and a sort of ratio of 1 to 10 between compressive and tensile strength. However, we do not find clear tendency concerning the shear parameter, um, which are cohesion and uh, friction angles. And another big problem, maybe the biggest problem, is that we can see that for a single technique with a given dry density, if the compressive tests are made with several laboratories, we can have some very different results. And there is two main reasons of that. The first one is that there is no clear unified testing protocol for the unconfined compressive test of uh, urban material. A sound example of that is for bricks. Well, we can see here that there is at least four ways to test the brick. We can test the brick uh, in, the, in the vertical, but the problem of that is that the brick is not tested in the compression direction. We can test the brick uh, at horizontal like that, but in such case, uh, very strong um, interaction between uh, the material and the and the plates of the, of the press, and so we can reach very abnormal high value of compressive, of compressive strength. Uh, and there is test on assemblage, but we can see that the test of assemblage, in test of assemblage, the results are strongly dependent on the mortar. Uh, which is put between the blocks. And another problem is that the impact of the material conditioning, because we have seen that when the relative humidity increases, the water content within the material increases, and so the mechanical behavior will decrease. So it's very important to, um, to have um, a good um, uh, control of testing condition and conditioning condition, which is almost not made, actually, uh, when in, uh, in most of laboratories. And uh, when we want to go uh, to seismic performance, uh, we had another problem, is the identification of dynamic parameter of Earth. So uh, what has been made uh, recently, mostly on round Earth building, is to use quite a classical approach that consists in uh, determining the fun fundamental natural frequencies and the dumping coefficient. So this approach led to quite interesting results and to quite promising results, but uh, it needs to be extended to much more complex geometry and to other uh, construction type. Another important point is uh, the seismic strengthening. So for that purpose, there is several uh, solution that have been uh, identified, but uh, right now there is no clear guide 
and recommendation to make this, uh, this kind of strengthening. And the last point for seismic performance is that uh, we need to really um, understand that there is a strong difference in stiffness between earth and other construction materials, uh, in, particular, in particular with timber, with uh, steel, with, uh, and with concrete. And so this strong difference in stiffness uh, is sometimes a big problem for design code, uh, seismic design code, and so that problem should be assessed. So the next point uh, is the durability. So uh, for sure, due to their uh, composition, uh, we know that the, the main uh, durability issue of urban material should be water. And water in liquid form, but as well water in solid form when the material is submitted to freezing foreign behavior. But we want to know uh, if there was not over durability issue of this material. So we check if wind can be a problem, for example, due for erosion or abrasion problem. But we saw that no, wind seems not to be a big problem because in a um, uh, lot of location, lot of windy location, there is urban construction, and this other and this other construction does not seem to be uh, largely eroded. Another problem can be fire, and for fire, it's quite not clear because in literature we can find uh, sometimes that fire is not a problem. Because, uh, because Earth can resist to fire. But on other uh, data, we can see that, yes, there can be some, there can be some problem uh, in water. Actually, if more studies are needed clearly on fire, we can, um, we can find that fire may be influenced by water content. So the higher water content will be, the lower the fire resistance should be. And the, the last point is the chemical degradation. So the chemical degradation was found to be really um, not a problem for unstabilized world earth. But when the, there is some stabilization on urban construction, so for example, like this cement, or if there is some steel rods, for example, for seismic uh, strengthening, okay, that can be some chemical degradation that should be assessed. So from um, right analysis, we can see that the durability problem has been well identified by the scientific community with no problem. But right now, it really lacks uh, experimental protocol to assess the real resistance of Earth towards this durability uh, issue. And there is a lot of standard that exists on that point, but there are no clear protocol that, uh, that, have, been, uh, uh, that, have, that have been consensual and that have been used by everybody. And um, the second point is the enhancement of the durability. So what is classically made to enhance the durability of urban material is to stabilize them, and most of the time to stabilize them with cement. But the problem is that uh, if it improves the durability, uh, most of the time stabilization reduces the hygroscopic performance and may as well reduce the uh, ecological uh, asset of urban construction. To sketch, to, to analyze this last point, um, we have made some, um, some studies on uh, the life cycle assessment of urban construction. Uh, and um, in order to compare all the data that are available in literature, we have used one single uh, functional unit, which is one square meter of crude earth wall, and uh, one single indicator, which is the cumulative energy demand, CED. And uh, the idea was to see if the addition of uh, hydraulic binder, like cement, in, um, in the earth really increase uh, significantly its cumulative energy demand. So really lowered its uh, ecological assets. And this is the result we obtained. So we can see that uh, at the material scale here, yeah, and at the wall scale, globally, yes. So the addition of binder uh, tend to increase the cumulative energy demand. Uh, except for two cases here yeah, at the wall scale, this one, because even if the binder content is low, there is some other additive, and this one, because the binder 
uh, for nitrogen in the, is not cement, but it can be climbing. But what we can see is that at the building scale, the results are really different. And that the, there is really a scale effect on uh, life cycle analysis. And that if we only consider block or wall scale, we considerably underestimate the CED, so the cumulative energy demand. So what we found there is that if we want to really uh, correctly assess the ecological uh, impact of, of building materials, we need to carry on life cycle analysis whether at the building scale. So to conclude uh, the state of the art uh, study, we can see that uh, it exists some regulation and some tests uh, all over the world for oven material. But this test uh, really differs from a, one country to another. And some of these tests uh, are not really robust or repeatable. So uh, given that conclusion, um, the idea was to make some round robin tests of the most prejudicial uh, point that we have identified, and they are the mechanical strength assessment of compacted earth block, the vapor resistance factor, and the durability assessment. Concerning the mechanical uh, assessment of, uh, of earth blocks, we have tested two protocols, the three-point uh, three bending test and the compressive uh, strength test. And for the, these two tests, uh, we have uh, analyzed the influence of the setup, of the test parameter, in particular the relative humidity of the air, of, uh, and of the water content of the model. Okay, so we can see uh, in the left part of the slide the result of a free point bending test. And in particular, uh, the lower graph here is the direct result of a variation of uh, inconfined compressing strength with the relative humidity. And this results gives us um, some confidence on the accuracy of this method because we can see that all the results of all the laboratory are in good consistency together. To go further on that point, we wanted to analyze the impact of the conditioning method on the standard deviation of the result obtained. And we can see that when the conditioning is reached through uh, ventilated ovens, like climatic chambers, oven, one refrigerator, the standard deviation is quite high. While on the other side, where the conditioning raw material is made through non-ventilated systems like saline boxes or laboratory, the standard deviation is quite low. So it gives some um, idea on what should be the conditioning method for other materials. If we go to the compressive strength results, which are in the right of the, of the slide, the results are much more complex to analyze because there is strong difference between laboratories and there is only two laboratories that uh, have participated to the Rubin test right now. So uh, this point needs to be analyzed further in order to reach definitive conclusion. A second Rubin test that uh, has been performed is the Rubin test on vapor permeability coefficient and through the wet cup measurement. So the principle of a wet cup measurement is to put a sample on a cup with a saline solution here that allowed to uh, keep a relative humidity within the cup, and all this uh, element, sample plus cup, is put in a um, regulated system at a given temperature and relative humidity. And the kinetic evaporation of the saline solution uh, will depend on the vapor permeability of the sample. And for this green robin test, we test uh, two things. The ventilation method here uh, within the box, and the impact of the surface resistance in function of the ventilation. So the tests are currently in progress, even if they have shown some uh, promising results. And we hope to share this result at the end with, uh, uh, with the technical committee, uh, HDB. The last one uh, concerns the abrasion test. So why the abrasion test? Because um, it is a quite important test which is used on other durability tests like erosion tests and freeze flowing resistance tests. And now the main uh, problem is how to define uh, properly the eroded area era in order to fix an abrasion coefficient. And so this round of tests have not yet begun because uh, it will be made on the same sample, but we want that have been used for mechanical and uh, agrothermal uh, round robin tests. So, as a conclusion, I can say that uh, 
the state-of-the-art uh, activity would be published in a state-of-the-art report, but the wound robin tests uh, have been launched and they should be finalized by 2022. Uh, and but that some issue uh, would remain unsolved at uh, at the end of the thesis. So uh, we think that we will propose a new TC at the end of, the of, uh, of this one. So if you are interested, uh, we need to keep in touch. So at the end, I will thank all the members of the TC again, and I will um, say that there will be an international conference of urban construction uh, that is sponsored by William in Paris in uh, March um, 2022, and uh, we need to submit an uh, abstract before uh, uh, October 13. So, uh, yeah, uh, stay informed of that as well. Okay, thank you for your attention.